the days grow shorter. This is a follow-up to the recent news of Earth's record fast rotation speed. For the first time, a day is slightly less than 24 hours. We have discussed the major version of Earth's rotation glitches, so to speak, the catastrophism potential for the world quake, where she sways and turns over, and we've discussed the short-term length of day glitches as well. These rotational glitches are small, but they help tell a big story, and one that can get easily misinterpreted. Between the natural rhythm of millisecond changes, scientists have known for decades that major solar storms and geomagnetic jerks throw extra kinks into that rhythm. We've discussed how the Sun has centennial, millennial, 3,000 and 6,000 year cycles, all leading up to the 12,000 year Micronova cycle, and how the biggest solar blasts would mechanically produce the largest shifts due to combining a great solar storm with induction potential through the mantle to the core, potentially producing a geomagnetic jerk at the same time. But what needs to be made clear is that these millisecond changes are not going to scale up to hours and hours of change. Consider a plate on your hand as you spin. You can only spin so fast before friction is overcome and the plate slips off. Here, it's not really the speed that makes the crust slip at the low velocity zone, it's the temperature change due to speed variation, which can disrupt the thermoelectric equilibrium. The crust doesn't slip exactly like the plate on your hand because it's sitting on top of the liquid mantle in all directions, but that friction that keeps the crust in place is under attack as Earth speeds up. The hotter it gets, the less friction and the better chance for crustal hydroplane scenario. No, I don't expect the rotation glitches to amplify to the point of drastically altering days, not until the low velocity zone is unlocked and the crust is free to shift. Whether it is the ancient stories of the Earth swaying like a drunkard, the stars thrown from the sky as the world turns over, the attack of the oceans or the evidence of surge deposits and alternating tropical and polar fossils found by Major White in the Arctic, or the predictions of the new pole positions matching where the current magnetic pole shift seems to be going, the story is all the same. The deposits, the rapid extinctions, the Heinrich events, the magnetic excursions, all tell the same story, but it's also a story of survival, one written by the ancestors of every one of you who, as surely as you are out there, you have survival in your DNA. But we can't be deer in the headlights. It doesn't require you bugging out to the rural nowheres and leaving the world behind. You can say that ancient people were better equipped to survive, but maybe not. We can see it coming. We can have supplies and flotation ideas and plans, and while they may have known something was changing in their world, all the evidence suggests they were completely caught off guard. Maybe cavemen had the upper hand in some ways, so use your brain to get the advantage now and carry it with you into the new age. I'll see you there, and I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.